Well, hi, good morning. Welcome to my shop and thank you so much for joining me here today. Today is the 12th day of July. Oh my gosh, we're almost halfway through July already. Oh my gosh, what's happening? And the uh, weather here is fantastic. It's cool this morning. Uh, the sun is out. Um, at the same time, people in the southern United States are roasting and like other places around the world, I believe, are roasting too, but not here. It's a nice cool day here. So and what am I doing in my shop? Here's what I'm going to do today. Before I start changing capacitors, I thought I might poke around with the voltmeter a little bit and just check some critical voltages in the radio, just see what they are. And one in particular is the grid voltage of the output tube kind of curious about whether it's been pushed positive or not or whether it's properly biased just an interesting thing uh, and then maybe maybe I'll find a few things and then uh, when doing the capacitors we can look for those things to be corrected perhaps uh, oh I can't pull the plug on those things I want to spin this around like this so I'll have to put the speaker over here Yeah, you can't operate these radios without their speaker. The speaker electromagnet is a important component of the power supply, the high voltage power supply. Okay, let's take another look in here. So um, I'm going to want to read the grid voltage of the output tube. Let's start with finding that one. The output tube is right here, right in the middle here. And I'm going to double check. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, they're going to identify the tubes. They don't identify the tubes on here. Ah. Ah. Why not? So we're looking again quite clearly. That's the rectifier tube. That's the output tube there. So this tube is going to have a grid connection. What tube is it? What tube is it? It's a 6F6, very common output tube. We'll identify which pin is which. Where is it written, written on the schematic? No, they have not put any uh, pin numbers on the schematic. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll look it up in the book here. <coughs> 6F6. grid <clears throat> pin number five <coughs> excuse me and the plate just for your sake is three three is the plate four is the screen five is the grid <clears throat> three four five on the output tube so the output tube normally has the highest plate voltage in the radio so we got to look at that too meter I'm going to use is going to be this guy here. Okay, and we should start up the radio, volume down, and we might just as soon have it on the uh, I believe is a broadcast band. Here we go. There it goes. So you can see I have the dim bulbs in the circuit. Make sure that's on DC. And we are going to be on the 500 volt scale to start with. I'm going to go right after the power supply filter capacitors and see what kind of voltage is on them. Is an idea of the uh, supply voltage. With the dim bulbs in, we're running low at 80 volts. I'll give it a moment anyway. Okay, so who exactly are we after here? So we have a filter capacitor there and another filter capacitor down here. You can see a red wire coming out quite a few wires coming over towards this tube. 
big capacitor sitting right here. How about this spot? So on the meter, on the 500 volt scale, that's just under 200 volts. You expect more out of a radio like this, but of course we're not running it with full power. So let's give it the full, the full power. 110 volts now. Now what do you get? You get a lot more. Not a lot more. 250 volts. Okay, 250 volts. Now, the other filter capacitors. Well, how do you like that? So this one, old one, red lead, goes to a terminal that this one's hooked up to. So this is probably to augment that one. That one's capacitance. Now there's another red wire coming over here. A little under 250. Two red wires and a black one here, just coming to the other, other end of this. And this goes right to the uh, chassis here, so I'm not going to get any voltage there. Okay, 250. Now, how much of that remains on the output tube? So, okay, locating the output tube again, and it's 345, where the pins, 3 was the plate. 1, 2, this is the plate. Well, there's no wire connected here. This, I didn't count this. Why well, went wrong here? Uh, how, 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 uh, three, four, five, wasn't it? So what would happen? Something happened there. Six F six. There never has been a wire connected to that terminal. Six F six. So some, something strange is going on. Probably just confusion on my part again. Yeah, three, four, five, six F six, six F six, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't understand that. Not a six F six? Let's go, we'll go around all the pins and we'll find the ones with the high voltage. There should be two uh, with a fairly high DC voltage, bring the meter up, and then one with a low uh, DC voltage, uh, negative voltage, a small negative voltage, that's the way to put it. So this would be pins one and two are hooked together and grounded, I'm pretty sure, nothing there. Pin three has nothing connected to it. Pin four. So I don't see anything happening. Pin four, pin five. There we go. So that's almost the full B plus there, 250. And that's that's just a slight bit more. And then this is probably the grid. You can hear it. On the speaker, you can see the meter going backwards. Flip that like that. 150 volt scale. What is the bias? Where'd it go? What happened here? Did I, uh... Okay, so on the 50 volt scale, the current bias is uh, just under 20 volts. So it's 17 volts bias on that tube. What do they ask or suggest in here? Uh, is this done with? they bias this tube. So there are no tubes with cathode biasing. So it's getting its its bias. Uh, okay, I don't understand what I'm seeing here. One meg. Maybe it's self-biasing, but that's unusual on an output tube. I think it's unusual. Just basically, this is just the uh, negative return of the high voltage. That's what it must be. It must be self-biasing. Uh, that's I don't know. So okay, well, what what kind of bias numbers do they like anyway? Six F six. So we can look 
here, we can look under fixed bias, minus 20, or minus 16. And under the cathode biasing, they just give you the cathode resistor. They don't give you a voltage. They give you the peak uh, AF uh, grid signal you can put on it, and it's going to be the same as the bias, 16, 20, 16, and 20. So this is biased at minus 17. It's right on. It's right on the money. So that suggests that the uh, blocking capacitor, which I'm pretty certain this guy right here, 0.015 blocking capacitor, must be working. Or some of the positive voltage from the plate circuit here would leak on. And then we would find the grid with a low negative or even a positive voltage on it. Well, that's very good. And the capacitor that's responsible for that must be this old guy here. That's the blocking capacitor. It's doing his job. Okay, um, there's not a lot more voltages worth looking at. Uh, the radio does operate, so um, there really isn't too much more to check. But let's go around this one. This one's easy to get at. So we'll just go with that one. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just switch this to positive. 50 anyway. How about that one? It goes right over on the 150 scale. Ooh. Oh, yeah, 150 scale. Let's put it that way. So lots of voltage showing up. There's a negative voltage there. I think we're in good shape. They didn't hear any hum coming out of this radio. Wow. All those old capacitors are not causing a big problem in this radio, but they're probably depleting the signal to some degree. There's quite a few all wrapped around the volume control here. Maybe those are maybe that's a good target to start with. Get rid of those three. So the way I do this is I remove remove a capacitor. And replace it I do one at a time normally so occasionally I'll do a couple at once because they're kind of on top of each other or something like that and then I test the one I take out uh, to see what condition it was in the um, situation here uh, well that's what I would do in the situation like, well, like this I'm just I'm thinking too many things at once right, time for a break time for a little break and then we'll do a few capacitors see what happens okay so I think uh, after giving it a little bit of thought just a little wee bit of thought the best way to proceed would be to do the audio uh, side of things first and I, obviously it's these capacitors maybe this one too um, maybe some up in here wherever those audio capacitors are I will find them but let's do all these first and the very first one I want to pick is the one that conveys the volume back into or over to the first amplifier tube. Um, so it's, it's going to be this one. I'm just curious. There's a wire here too. It's got a wire and a capacitor. Why does it have a wire and a capacitor? How does that work? So we have the volume control here. It comes off through a capacitor, then encounters more, then encounters the grid and more stuff. What's this here? Used in model 387 only. This is switch 29. So this is grounding. This is going to put a ground on here. There's no phono input on this guy that I saw. No, I don't think there is. So this would typically be a phono input, I think, or, or an arrangement to allow for a phono input. Uh, switch number 29. Switch number, well, I don't know, it's, it's not on this list, is it? Would it be on this list? 28, 29. Audio shorting switch, 38C7 only, part of selector crank. 
Uh, so the selector switch goes in two positions only. Now wait a second now. 37, this is only on the, let's read it again, 29. The 38C7, isn't that what I've got here? Isn't this the 38C7? 38C7 code 121. Well, okay, let's follow the wire. Uh, so the, the capacitor is going to be conveying the audio, and this is apparently heading towards the switch. Not really. It's heading, it's heading down this way, the, I mean, the switch is here. The radio's uh, turned off, by the way, in case you're freaking out I'm sticking my finger into it. Can't really see where it's going. Looks like it's heading down in this range. This is a, this is a uh, grounding terminal here, I think. I can, maybe not, maybe not. Not, not grounded terminal, but that may not be the wire. Ah. Well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? So I'm going to cut this capacitor out, and we're going to test it. Uh, it's a, it looks like it's in great shape. That's what it looks like. It looks like uh, this particular. So we're going to cut them out though. marker on the terminal it's coming from. So I can't forget. I'll leave a little bit of wire there too. Okay, here he is. So, you know, as old capacitors go, it's in good shape. It's the right size, 0 0.015 made in the U.S. 200 volter. Okay, so what we're going to do to test it is use this guy here. This is a uh, device designed for doing exactly what I'm going to do. Testing capacitors in tube radios. In tube radios, capacitors are subjected to high voltages, much higher than what you would find in a uh, modern uh, transistor radio. Right? Transistors run on current, tubes run on voltage. So this tester is useful in the high voltage environment of a, or for testing capacitors that have to survive a high voltage environment. And the way this works is pretty simple. I'm going to set this to a certain voltage. Here it's set to, it says 25, but it's actually 50 if you measure it. 50 volts. When I rotate this control, it will apply the 50 volts on here. This is basically a current meter. Um, let me just see if I can make it a little more visible. It's a magic eye with an, an open pie. I just put my shadow there. You can see the, the opening is down below and it's open wide right now. When I first close the switch, current's going to flow to charge the capacitor here. And while it does, the eye is going to close. And as the current reduces, as this fills up, the eye will open. If current doesn't stop flowing, the eye never opens all the way. Why would current not stop flowing? Because it will, in a perfectly good capacitor, it will charge it up and then the current will stop. Because in an older capacitor, there can be a leak through the capacitor it turned into somewhat of a resistor. That's what we're really finding out. So here we go. Now I've done this so many times and so many radios and so many capacitors. I know what good, and good, bad, and ugly is. Here we go. Okay, so this capacitor is testing like new. Let's go a higher voltage, 150 volts. Now it's only opening part way in there. It might be a little hard to see in the video. I said like new, well not really. But uh, at low voltage there's, there's really no significant leakage, but raise the voltage a bit. 
Now, this guy's duty where he was in the radio, there's not much voltage. He's not blocking B plus or anything like that. So, this guy was perfectly serviceable and I've taken him out. That raises a lot of questions about all the rest. And what, what benefit there is in going ahead and changing all these capacitors. Now, there are some up here in, in the radio area might be more important. But these guys, let's take a look at what they're doing. Hooked up to the uh, volume control. This is probably the input side of a volume control. Wait, there's capacitors everywhere. You can't have uh, you can't have it like this. <laughs> I say very defiantly. So here's the volume control. Okay, so it's showing that there's a. Uh, a takeoff on the back of the volume control or a uh, tap. Yeah, and I didn't notice that, but it would be hidden around the back there. Let's see. It looks like I can see, it's hard to see, this this re uh, capacitor looks like it connects to a floating resistor here. Yeah. And, and this wire, this wire right here. What is all that about? Okay, so we have a, uh, the uh, tap on the back of the volume control goes to a resistor body and dot. Looks like it's a uh, you know twenty thousand, thirty thousand ohm resistor, something like that. Now, how's that add up? With this? We would have a capacitor coming off. Let's go this way. This way is easy. Right to ground. But there's a capacitor sitting here. What 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 am I doing here? Um bikes. saying Ike's because this doesn't match the uh, <laughs> silence silence is ruling here at the three volume control terminals the center one there's no question the center one is the center one there's the center one comes out reaches the capacitor the one I've cut out it also has this wire wire must be going to the switch but, but when I studied it, it it didn't seem to go to that switch at all the switch being up here so then we look and one of the other legs is grounded the bottom is grounded solidly it's a solid ground there's a wire here I'm not seeing wow right have to be have to be awfully bad vision time. There's no wire there. Let's take a look. At, we'll just turn this guy on. We'll check and see. It. Is there really a ground there? Okay, one lead to the chassis. We have a lead on the chassis for a test. that grounded there's a capacitor right there curiouser and curiouser it gets um, well let's take a close look there must be a wire and for some reason I cannot see it with my eyes let's see if we can see it with this camera here now I may have to uh, no it's auto focusing that could be a problem in itself, but let's go over here. Oh, huh. uh, the terminal in question.
question is this one. Oh, come on, camera. So I'm going to stop that camera from doing what it's doing because it's going to drive me nuts. So if you'll just bear with me a moment here. I'm going to call up the, as I've done so many times on these videos, call up the camera dialog box and take control of the focus. It's looking pretty good right now. Okay, what's going on here? So, this guy shows a ground. Well, is this capacitor shorted? I mean, that's not very likely. The terminal touching the ground back here. So, they, they, there's a uh, paper uh, uh, thing. <laughs> Paper, paper piece I'm rubbing here, and that's to make sure these these uh, terminals don't contact the chassis. Is this is this one connected to the frame? I wouldn't. I've never seen it before like that. Is it connected to the frame somehow? No. Where's he getting the ground from? He says. He asks. Of this capacitor? That doesn't make any sense at all. There should be a sol according to the schematic there's a solid ground on here. According to the measurement there's a solid ground on here. According to my eyeballs there's just a capacitor. Why am I not seeing? I, there's nothing more to see here. Well, the intention is, well, look at these capacitor sizes. So that's a 0.01. And this is probably a 0.01 also. It's a 4487S. Can we see that number? No. Different number. It's not, probably not a 0.01. Mr. Philco, what have you done here? That's my coffee break indicator telling me to go for a coffee break. Let's look in the back here. So that is the back. It's going to stop in just a moment. So there's a wire going out a hole. Just, they're all similarly colored in pattern just to make things challenging. That resistor is not connected to any of those wires. That resistor is on the uh, Heart sticking out of the back of the volume control and it connects to this capacitor and that wire. And then this wire, look how they've done this. This wire goes like 16 kilometers this way and it connects to the uh, tone control and the on off switch. That's on the far side of the capacitor. The uh, wire you see sticking out there on the clip lead, that's the terminal I've, I've cut the uh, other capacitor off of. Well, you know, I don't like doing these things, I like working on stuff when I've got question marks about you know, what it is I'm doing. <laughs> Should we replace that one capacitor or go ahead and snip this one? You know, I'm going to snip this one and then see what kind of reading I get on that terminal. What is going wrong with me? Insufficient coffee is uh, it's a possibility. Uh, it's all, always a possibility. You know, I'm trying to get my four cups of coffee a day. Again. It's actually two cups, but they're really big. Uh, okay, so we'll nip this off and repeat the test. But this doesn't make sense. Um, you're not making sense here. Oh, that's going to be tough to replace too. Okay, voltmeter, ohmmeter rather. working. 
is it somehow internally grounded inside the uh, and if this is a ground point then this is a capacitor tied to ground it's just using this as a ground point how does this become a ground point then we should see a varying resistance here how I turn the volume control. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. How's this grounded? Unless, unless you know, the volume control came with this terminal internally grounded to the uh, frame which is then bolted onto the chassis. So that's how you would get this grounded. But that, that I've never seen that before. But it must be the case. Then, then this capacitor has nothing to do with input. And th th this radio would operate. Well, I would have to connect this to the chassis, I guess. I don't know what this is doing. Assumably, it's doing something useful. So if you tie this to the chassis and leave this terminal wide open, uh, the radio is going to work. That makes this the input side, and this capacitor is carrying the input signal into the volume control. And that, that would mean minimum volume is maximum resistance between here and here, which would be set this the way I just set it. And this would be a short circuit. Top volume, it all makes sense. It's all making sense, except how does this get a ground? Well, maybe I just encountered something I've never encountered before. An internally fixed ground on the volume control. I mean, if you know, if they could do it, I, 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 I guess it makes sense. To prove this, I would have to back this nut off, loosen this thing, bring it out of contact with the uh, chassis, and then see if this goes away. I'm not going to do that. Okay, that that must be the case. That has to be the animal. Uh, I'm gonna go consult the coffee cup for a few minutes here. Okay, this is bothering me enough that uh, I am gonna loosen this off. And I'm gonna try to bring the volume control out of contact with the chassis and see if the if the uh, short clears. I'm just checking these clip leads here before I go ahead and use them. Good. Okay, but we're really not looking for any precision. So I would connect here. on the black. Electricity going backwards. Come on there. We get a... So we had a zero but it kind of wandered around a bit. Probably just contacts. Who's, who's in trouble on that? I thought this wouldn't happen. We, we, we need a nice solid zero here. Well, I'm not going to be able to tell anything like this. Why, why is it doing this? So I have two kinds of clip leads. I have light wire ones, these are light wire ones, and I have heavier wire ones purchased at different times. And I find, no surprise, the heavier wire ones 
are a little more reliable, even though I have gone and soldered them all. Because when you buy these things, they, uh, oddly enough, most of them are not soldered. They simply crimp. You crimp the wire into the connector here. That's really no good. Okay, we'll put this one on the ground. And then we'll take, oh, we'll use this one. Need this one here. Okay. Let me just see if we get a better result out of this. So it really shouldn't matter which ones. First, right on the chassis. Oh my gosh. Come on, really? <laughs> uh, what? What happened to you, Meter? What, what am I? Am I? <laughs> What's happening here? Oh my gosh. Oh, look what I've done. I've grabbed the voltmeter lead <laughs> from a voltmeter. Not the other lead from the uh, meter. Okay. Okay, back. Let's try this again. So, yellow here. Green one here. We must start from a place of certainty. First on the chassis. We get a nice zero. Not jumping around. And go on the terminal. Nice zero. Not jumping around. Okay, now we're good to go. So I'm going to loosen this off now. Now, because there's wires connected to it, the, the volume control itself shouldn't turn. Oh, watch your fingers. Get your fingers away from it. Now, the chance, you know, there's a chance I cannot actually make this not be in contact. Let's, oh, look. There it is. Well, I guess this is a volume control with one, you know, the, uh, the output end, I guess you would call it the output end, is, uh, Now, a lot of these volume controls, they have a little tab that sticks through uh, a hole that's prepared in the chassis. You can see it right there. So the volume control is, is positioned properly and cannot cannot rotate. I can tighten this down without worrying. Watch your fingers. There you have it. Okay, so something I've never seen before seems surprising to me they would make a volume control that way although an awful lot of radios the volume control one side of the volume control is grounded to the chassis just like this one but it uh, reduces the flexibility of this part so if you're a company building this part uh, and you offer it for sale there's a lot of radios it couldn't go into because of the uh, fixed ground inside it is that on the schematic here by any wild chance that I didn't see it because I wasn't looking for it? Uh, I don't see any note about it or anything. See, even the fact that they swung the ground symbol over here kind of gives a hint that there's a wire going from here to here. But there isn't any wire. They should have maybe drawn this over here, but then it would have interfered with this line. So I'm not the draftsman. He had his challenges. I never was a drafts person, but I supervise draft people. Can you believe that? Wow, that, that was an uncomfortable situation. <laughs> people who've been drafting their entire careers, and some young schmo like me ends up supervising them. Okay, that's the story. Grounded terminal, capacitor just using the grounded terminal, and this is the input side. This is going to be the output. This is the output capacitor, and that's the input capacitor. Did I get it? I'm repeating myself. Good. Um, and I've tested this. This is, this is certainly good enough in the position it was in. This would not be good in some other positions in the radio. And, you know, it's here, it's on my bench. When's the next time it's going to be a part on somebody's bench? 
who's got a soldering iron and a bunch of capacitors. Said, well, it could be a long time, so I better do them now. That would make sense. That makes sense. I'm making sense. <laughs> At least I, I think I am. Okay. Okay, so replacing the capacitor that comes from the volume control. And uh, on the schematic it's shown as a 0.015. What I took out was 0.015. That's pretty precise. It's not a 0.01 or a 0.02, it's a 0.015. So it's in the audio line. It's in a position where a different size capacitor might affect the tonal quality of the radio. So they picked the 0.015. I'm going to put in a brand new 0.015. Let's just test it. Be sure I've got the right one. 15 nanofarads, which is the same as 0.015 microfarads. Right on the money. So that guy is going to be the output side. And it's a bit of a struggle to put it down in here, but I'm going to do that. And, uh, We'll install that and the other one the other one I never looked at the size did I ooh ooh that's not the other one the other one's still in here <laughs> and the other one the other one the other one okay I'm going to change all three of these we will, we will be in business and I'll I still have one more to I got two yeah right okay you're, you're muttering man you're muttering Okay, so this is the input capacitor to the volume control. So all the audio is going through this one too to get to the volume control. Here we go. 50 volts, what do you say? You say, hey, I'm in good shape. 150 volts. Oh, I'm in really, really good shape. Now this is probably a 200 volt capacitor. 400. Oh yeah, okay. Let's give it. Let's give her. Apparently that's a Canadian phrase. Let's give her. Right open. So, you know, excellent shape. Should have left it in. But, you know, how do you know? You can't know. You can't know. <laughs> you can't know until it's too late. It's just too late. Okay, so I'm going to put in the uh, next one. You can see my, uh, my clip lead gave up the ghost here. Right? tug on it okay. out again so I'm gonna put a 0.01 in there right right yes it's a 0.01 I think I'm getting low on 0.01s and there's no real voltage involved there so I have uh, options here okay let's stick a capacitor in there okay so I've cut out the last Capacitor. We don't know where this one is in the circuit. It's just using this terminal as a ground terminal. And it's a, a 0 .006. That's probably easy to find on the schematic. 200 volt 0 .006. Okay, let's take a look. Actually, we look at the parts list now. Unfortunately, the way they've done the parts list here, it's a, it's a bit of a hassle. Um, so we, we have to come right down through here looking for a point zero, a bunch of zeros with a six attached. Show me a bunch of zeros. Point zero six, point zero zero eight. Uh-oh, way down here. Not over here. These are something. These aren't numbered. This stuff. None of this stuff is numbered. These are all knobs and stuff. Well, I didn't see it. Let's try again. Oh, look how they've done this. Thirty-five thousand uh, picofarads. And well, now I forgot what I'm looking for. Yeah, zero zero six, right? Zero. 006. That, so that would be 6,000 picofarads if they've done it that way. So 6,000 could be any number eight, 6 with zeros all around it one way or the other. It's 
pretty exciting part of the video here. Oh, I don't even know I didn't even have it on camera, did I? Not that it matters much. 0 0.06 microfarads. That's a 30, 44, 67. This is a 30, 44, 67. That's definitely point zero zero six. Um, there's an extension on the number. 4467S. Uh, 106. 40, just says 4467. Well, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure what to make of it. It's definitely a 6 here, right? It's not an 8. Where'd it go? How come I keep losing track of it? Let's look at it on the, the other camera here. Some crazy stuff, but you really you need to be certain of things because you just can't afford to incorporate errors when you're doing this kind of stuff. Wow, that's point zero zero six. Like, how can it be anything else but thirty forty four sixty seven? Point zero zero six. Uh, because I. see a point zero six forty four sixty seven is there anybody with an s on the end anybody got a number with an s on the end there is no s don't know what the s means so if we go up here I'm going to force this through again Well, it's either a typo. I think it would be a typo. Uh, less likely to be the incorrect capacitor in the radio. Or, you know what? There could be. Hey, let's look at the service notes. Maybe in the service notes we'll find out that a change was made in this radio. Volume control not showing on service bulletin. Tone control not shown on service bulletin. Wave switch, why, why, are they, why are they bothering with that? Patter changed. Run number two. Thermal compensating condenser added. Wired in parallel with this other one. This is the 38 C7 codes 121 and 124. This is the radio I have. I don't understand these notes. Tone control not shown on service bulletin. So this is the service bulletin, isn't it? Oh, so and so is shown. Uh, that is shown is for model 38C9 only. So what they're saying is that on the on the schematic, I think what they're saying is there's stuff shown on the schematic labeled C7 that actually is only in the C9 radio. I'm not, that doesn't even make sense. I'm not getting this. Patter changed. Thermal compensating. Condenser added. I'm going to have to look at these. Shadow meter added. Bezel plate removed. No. Well, I don't know what to make of it. Then we're in a, a dumb situation again. 1938. So uh, this radio is a, is a 37, right? 1937. I have a book here, but it only goes up to 1930. 1938 and 37. Do I do I have another set of schematics? Let me go look. Okay. 
Okay, if we assume, uh, you know, it could be it could be the size is shown differently on the schematic itself. Let's take a look. So if the point zero six is actually the correct one, it's number thirty eight. We have to find number thirty eight, thirty three, thirty eight, right here. And look what it says: point zero zero six. It's so one side to ground and. It looks like it's a, a selected capacitor in the tone control. So not a very important capacitor at all. Much of, like much of the time, you might not even have it engaged in the radio. But let's uh, let's not uh, jump to conclusions here. You're switching a ground on this tone control. Grounding that, grounding nothing, then grounding this. So when you ground this, you increase the treble cut down this line coming off the plate the output tube when you ground when you ground the middle one there's nothing happening ground this one you are cutting out this capacitor in fact and so you would be allowing again more treble to the ground but you're doing it way back here at the back of the volume control and that's interesting because you use the the uh, a terminal coming out the back of the volume control as sort of a loudness deal. So, you know, the problem with our ears is when the sound gets quiet and low volumes, we don't hear treble and bass as much. Our ears are designed that in, in the low sound circumstances, we focus in on the voice range, which we cut out the lows, we cut out the highs. We don't bother with them anymore. We just kind of concentrate our brain power so our, our ears don't hear uh, the same uh, uh, response curve, if you like, although I'm showing a straight line here, it look like this more. Uh, we have a different response curve at different volume levels. So to compensate for that, they make arrangements so the treble cut kind of disappears on low, low volume settings. That, that, that's my understanding of how this is working. And this gives the loudness effect. You know, in some stereos, there's a loudness switch. And what they're really uh, trying to refer to is this, this problem of in low volume settings, the tonal quality disappears in our ears. Especially mine, wax-filled ears that I've got here. Okay, uh, so point zero zero six is the one we're going to put in. Let's test this guy. I still have this instrument operating over here. And in the more modern times, the measurement you use to judge capacitors is that ESR measurement. But you don't do that with these guys. I'm not sure it would reveal anything. I don't know. I guess, I guess it would. This is more directly interpreting the uh, condition of the capacitor though, by pounding it with voltage. Pound it with 50. Right open. Pound it with 150. Yeah, it's not quite all the way. So these are all turning out to be in pretty good shape. The voltage on this one, where is it? Oh, I've lost track of that too. Well, let's give her. There you are, a little Canadian talk there. And it still opens a little bit. Yeah, as capacitors go, in old radios like this one, this one's from the late 1930s. And so, assuming these are the original capacitors, I have every reason to believe that they all—they're all Philco. These are in really good shape, and that means this radio has had a good life. It's been—it's never been in somebody's garage. It hasn't lived in an attic. Didn't spend time on the back porch has probably been in an air-conditioned environment most of its later life because early life there wouldn't be any air conditioning so that's probably why it is the condition that it is that'd be my guess now I gotta replace that capacitor uh, well did, did I find it did I determine what it was I just saw the size and went, there you are I didn't really talk about what it does well I did talk about what it does yeah it's just part of the trouble control so very low voltage, it's just off the volume control. Volume control is a DC block here. There's just no, there's no DC in here, I believe. I, I believe, sneak in, no. No DC in there. 
any old capacitor is going to do the trick as long as it's a point and it should be size specific here because it's part of the tone control a point zero zero six do 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 I have such a thing as a point zero six um, if I do it's in here Ooh, I think this is a no somewhere else for 0 0.06. I think this is a this is a 0 0.08. 0, 0, 0, 0.06. What about that guy? Uh, what's it doing in this box? It shouldn't be in this box. This is a yeah. Okay, I gotta hunt one down. I got lots more capacitors over yonder. Okay, the best I can do is take two point zero zero two sevens. Put them in parallel you get to almost 0 0.006. Well let's just test them in parallel. What did they really what's this guy say about them? So five thousand six hundred picofarads is the same as five point six nanofarads is the same as point zero zero five six, which is pretty close to zero zero six. It's a winner. I can't do any better than this anyway. So we'll put these two in in parallel to replace the one I took out. That's close enough uh, to do the job. Okay, so I'm going to install this one in here. What a hassle getting in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these together first. I'm going to attach one of these to the other and then use the leads of the other to connect into the radio. So I'll just go like this and then do something. <laughs> do something. Okay, we'll get those installed. Okay, not one of my greatest achievements, but this is what we've got in the end. Two capacitors hooked up like that. There's long leads here don't need long leads. Okay, this will be a tough one to stick in there though. Okay, let's take a look at how I did here. Three capacitors shouldn't have taken me so long, but little issues come up. Okay, back in there. I don't know if we'll be able to see that one. test this radio, find out if it still works, or if even though I'm being very careful, I have somehow messed it up. Good. Okay, but, uh, whoops, first, first I think I'm going to drink a little more coffee and check up on my cats. Okay, ready for a test. Now I'm not planning on receiving any particular stations or anything like that. I just want to hear sound come out of the speaker. The hiss will be just fine. Let me just straighten things up a little bit before I power it up. I don't like having too much stuff spread out on the bench when I'm turning stuff on because if I need to panic and there's junk everywhere, I, I, I won't know. I won't know the right way to panic. I will, I will double panic. Okay, won't need to panic though. Here we go. So volume is down, switch is on. Let's we'll see if the tone thing, look at that. Here we go, watching the dim bulbs carefully. And that's normal operation. Especially that second little bump for this radio. Okay. Now, I don't really have an antenna connected. I actually have that signal generator connected, but it's not even switched on. So a little bit of wire on the antenna. We'll see what we get. We're operating with 80 volts. 
That's pretty little. Still amazed at the, how, how they, who came up with this, this game? Okay, we're going to give it the full Monty here. 111. Where'd the volume go? Okay, let's try my finger as an antenna. She's dead, Jim. You've killed it. amount of volume there. Let's, let's tune this radio. Yeah, it's still working. Definitely quieter at this end. Probably alignment issues. Okay, well we don't want to pass judgment too quick. Seems like doing that has reduced the volume a little bit, but I'm not doing this in any valid quantified way. Hey, what about that tone control? What about it? We'll do it with the hiss, the white noise. So the way this works is, this is uh, the, uh, the second capacitor. This is the one I just installed. That's shorting the one I just installed. Didn't do anything. And one more is switching it off. Yeah, I'm switch it off. How come you didn't do anything? So this would be the these capacitors. Oh, that's right, it depends on the volume control setting. So we have a way up high here. I've probably really cut out the operation of these. Yeah, there used to be a hum here. No hum. Well, we got something out of it. Let's listen to this. Can you hear a ringing in there? Ring. It's got a microphonic tube. Hey, almost certainly a tube. Not necessarily, but... Who's... Ooh. Loose. Isn't there one more tube up here somewhere? Wasn't there one more? Maybe not. It's definitely something. Well, it's just a curiosity anyway. Okay, enough of that. Enough. Enough already. Enough. Good show. Okay, tomorrow we just carry on with the capacitor parade. And uh, I don't know which ones we'll do next. We'll do something. And we'll see how that goes. Great. Thank you for watching. And uh, onward with this radio. See ya.